All right, welcome back, listeners. I am so excited today. A good friend of mine, I do call him that, and a good brother uh, in our faith, uh, Carl Kuzer is here from Lawyer's Title. And let me tell you, you guys got the wonderful pleasure of hearing Marianne Sharp earlier this year. And let me, uh, I know they're the same industry, same business, and you're thinking maybe this is a little bit too much repeat, but if you've heard both these individuals talk, you haven't wasted your time. You're coming to hear a really unique perspective on how businesses run, how the world looks, and, and title in general, and how they care about people. And there is a reason why we use these guys for our, our personal title. Uh, it's because not only do they get the job done, but it's how they take care of people, it's their core values. And it's honestly, everything you're going to see in this episode, because you're just going to be hooked on these people the same way that I am. And so without further ado, please welcome Carl Kuzer to our show today. Well, thank you, John. That's uh, That was quite, uh, I'm humbled and I'm honored that you would say those nice things about me. And I feel uh, very uh, privileged to be here, very honored to be here, because you are a quality person that I respect and I admire. So hearing that come from you means a lot. So thank you. Well, honestly, it's all true words, and I don't want to get too much into the you know, the, the back and forth, the, the mush. game. We, we can do this to each other all day, just cut each other's hair. But, uh, you know, the reality is, though, I mean, I found you guys because you guys were so highly regarded in the area. I mean, that's hard to do in title because title is warfare. <laughs> you no, know, there's so many companies out there that are representing it. And for you guys to stand out the way you have and then honestly live up to everything and more than from what I've heard, because as you, you just got to talk to my partner, Willie, outside. Right. And he loves you guys. Like, we were talking about that today. He's like, you know. I can't think of anything that I haven't appreciated about them since we started working with them. And that's a big deal. We do a lot of deals with you guys, you know? And so I kind of wanted to to pick your brain a little bit before we dive into who you are. Is there anything in particular that you think brings about that kind of consistency and that, that, that positive production that you and Marianne bring? Well, I think, and, and I'm, I'm glad to hear that because it, it validates the long nights and uh, sure. hours that we put in. Because we, we, I think, and that's, I think, a key to the success is both Marianne and I don't look at this as an eight to five job, a Monday through Friday job. I mean, we that's are right. working till, you know, late hours and, you know, clients will call us at night and on the weekends. And we realize that our partners, our, our realtors, our, our lenders don't keep standard business hours, eight to five, Monday through Friday. So we also have to be flexible in that as well. Yeah. And so we don't keep hours that a typical title person may uh, keep as Monday through Friday, eight to five, or maybe even shorter than that in some cases. But, <laughs> um, and that's always been, and I know Marianne too, and she was in the private sector, as we could say, yeah. um, that you, you work till the job's done. Mm. You don't, keep a set schedule. It's like my wife, you know, one of the things is I am very uh, flexible. I can, you know, take time as needed to go do things. But then there's other times when it's like, hey, babe, you got to understand, I got the stuff I got to do. And there's even times when we're going somewhere and she's on my phone responding and I'm dictating exactly (laughs) what needs to be said. And she's, you know, she's getting it out there for me. So part of that key to success is work ethic. And that was one of the things that drove me to Marianne a number of years ago when we reached out to her to uh, see about coming on board the team because I was part, part of an original team. Right. And then she came on board and then some changes happened and then it's just been her and I for the last six years. She just had her six year anniversary. Oh, that's awesome. So we, uh, work ethic was really one of the admiral pieces other than her just general uh, friendly nature, um, smart, smart girl. Oh, so yeah. Very smart girl. So sharp. And you know, no that's the last name. Yeah. Ha. I realized that after <laughs> I said it too. <laughs> Two dads clearly here. <laughs> yeah. Dad jokes rule, by the way. Amen to that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask my son that. He would beg to differ. <laughs> but, you know, the work ethic. And then as far as like for me, I, I've been doing this for, shoot, since 2000. And it hasn't just been on sales. I've been in operations, uh, title and escrow side. I've uh, done search and exam, so the prelims, the preliminary reports that come out. I've d- gone into uh, the chains of titles and gone back to the back plant, as they call it, and opened up the old uh, books in the crypt, with, you know, er, blow off the dust, you know, <laughs> Harry Potter scenario looking thing. And, you know, looked through lot books and gone through microfish. Remember what microfish I is, do. you know? Yeah. Uh, dating ourselves there, but yeah. so I've, I've done those things and then been in management and had to make management decisions and then answer to a profit and loss statement. And so all those things for myself really lend to 
you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm back in sales and that's on by design yeah. because I prefer that. But all that experience, I think, you know, when management has to make a decision, I understand where that decision is coming from because I've been that person in that role before making that decision. Yeah. But then also, you know, when they say something that may not be the, the answer we need for our transaction. Right. I can offer solutions and alternatives like, well, okay, I understand our position, but would you consider X or Y? And we had one, in fact, the other day where uh, we were having a difficult file and I brought it up and the operations manager was like, huh, why didn't I think of that? So, you know, it's it's that experience coupled with the work ethic and right. just the nature of who Marianne is and in my experience and, and the things that I do. We match up very well on that. But I think it lends and creates a unique set of uh, virtues and, and of, of skill sets sure. to, that, that help us and help our clients ultimately. So. Yeah, no, I, I couldn't agree more. I think, I mean, sometimes I ask these questions knowing the answer because I know you guys and I want to hear it from you. And, and I, it, you really said it best. There's a lot of reasons why we cling to you guys is you, we, we share that ethic with you. We share that hard work. We share that uh, that real desire to the job isn't done, then it's not done. You right. know, we're going to go after it until it is. And uh, you mentioned uh, kind of right at the end uh, the, the word virtues. And I think that's a really uh, a good segue to kind of link in a little bit to your past here. Because, I mean, when you think military, you think of a lot of virtues, right? And uh, you, uh, you know, thank you so much, have, have served uh, in our nation's Air Force. Yes. And uh, you even served in uh, actual military combat in the Middle East. Um, well, I mean, I don't know if you saw combat, him combat zones, but yeah, combat I, zones. I, I, I think we were shot at once, but. which is <laughs> hey, which is still a heck of a lot more dangerous than anything I've been in. Well, and honestly, I, people can you know scoff at the difference between how close or not close. To me, it's still service. You still did a great, tremendous thing for us, and you were still a lot closer to a bomb than I've ever been. You know what I mean? And and that's th I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that my sons haven't knew, had to experience that because people like you were out there. And you know, I, we talk a lot about military and being thankful for them in service but how do you think because i'm always interested to hear this because as you know my partner he was former coast guard so he gave me some like tips on what kind of prepped him for this world what things do you think from the air force brought you the preparation for what you for when you did join this world because i'm kind of curious about that well there's a there's a saying in the air force that um you know adapt and overcome mm -hmm. and that applies extremely to our world, our real estate industry. Right. There is never a set of files, and a, a set of properties, a set of individuals within those files that are exact same cookie cutter. It's not mass produced. It's everything is unique. Everything has its own set of circumstances. Everything has its own challenges. Some things go very easy, as we know, and some are, well, just, uh, you know, yeah. those, those <laughs> things that keep you up at night that are just problems. And it, it takes forever and a day to to solve if we can even solve some of them, because sometimes right. not everything gets fixed. But I think the military prepares you for this industry in that ability to um, understand that challenges will come and you have to adapt and overcome. And mm -hmm. that adapt and overcome is uh, really a virtue of people that are successful in the military, because if you can't adapt and you can't overcome, you are not going to last long or mm -hmm. have a very successful career. You're definitely not going to promote. Yeah. Um, and so that, that malleable, malleable mm -hmm. trait to, to be, um, take, take instruction, take criticism, learn from past mistakes, um, always desire to seek improvement mm -hmm. and move forward. And, you know, your partner that was in the Coast Guard, I have, I've always thought i go man they never get mentioned you know I always hear army navy air force marines but yeah there's coast guard too those guys you know they people don't realize that in in the you know, desert storm and everything there were coast guard ships patrolling the persian gulf and That's even right. uh, i think the uh the hostilities in 2003 coast guard was there so my hat's off to the coast guard too we call them coasties you know but, okay yeah. coasties, I'll, coast, I'll start calling them that coasties, see, coasties. see how much you like that <laughs> <laughs> but um, no there it, it's it's uh yeah, the military, and, and and thank you for for that that shout out about that. You know, because oh, it was one of the biggest honors of my life to serve this nation. And you know, I, I God bless America for a Amen. reason. And you know, I frankly, on a, on a personal side note, I think it's because of our support of of Israel and being established as a Christian nation from our founding. Yeah, uh, but 
you know, it, this nation is is the beacon, as Ronald Reagan once said, is that city on a hill. Yeah. And um, I, I believe in everything that that stands for. And until my dying breath, we'll do everything I can and whatever function I'm performing in uh, to, to uphold that. So, man, I, I mean, you're you're singing songs to me. I love, <laughs> I love all this. This is fantastic. I couldn't agree with you more. And and I think uh, that, again, that's why I, I, I had to bring up your, your, your past, because I think we all should have an appreciation for it. We should all know what was sacrificed to get what we have today and that we should all be fighting for it to maintain it. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I have my father and I were never active military because of uh, actual medical conditions that kept us from it. And my father was always a big pile driver on. No, no. We came from a different place. We know what we had. We're thankful for what we have here. And it's because of people like that that have sacrificed everything. And so for us to to overlook that part of your life would be a huge mistake, in my opinion. And I honestly think uh, it, it's even um, more beautiful. The the terms that you picked out of the, the, the adapt and overcome, I think that's a perfect um, foundation for exactly why you guys are who you are at, at, at Lawyer's Title. Because... Um, if anyone knows anything about the real estate industry, even if you've only been in it for like a month, <laughs> you got to know, you got to be able to adapt quick or you're in trouble. Things change. It's unbelievable. On a moment's notice. Right? Yeah. Well, I mean, and it, uh, all the way at the federal level, we're talking about changes from Freddie and Fannie, from the way that the bank systems can change things and the way that laws and regulations change based on court systems. And then, and then this, what about those interest rates? Exactly. <laughs> right. Like, I mean, think about how, like how crazy last year is because of the interest rate change. And then you look at the, even at the state level, how things change and the loan minimum uh, maximum just went up and people yeah. went nuts over that. And so you're always on your toes, not to mention then you have what's already unique in each client because every client's going to bring you something different, some different spice of life that they, that they have in their personality or in the, in, in the package of whatever it is that they're accomplishing with you. And, and to, if you, if you don't have the mentality to adapt and overcome, you're not going to survive in this industry. You just won't. And so for that to already be naturally in your DNA, so to speak, that's phenomenal. And it's so evident because like I said, we have had some challenging files and not once have I ever heard Marianne even quiver. You know what I mean? Like on the other end of the line. And I've called her sometimes at like 6.30, 7 o'clock. I know it's past. And I'm like, I'm so sorry to call you around dinner. So, well, no, this is great. You know, she wants to talk and, and she'll be she'll, she'll do a deep dive for me on something on a profile or, or whatever I need to do for somebody that, that needed a little extra information on, on their house. And uh, it, it is phenomenal to see the way that you guys implement uh, at that level, but with the integrity with which you do it. Well, thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. That. So I, again, I, I can't be more thankful to have you across the table today. And, and I really hope that people walk away with understanding, um, even if they're not in the military, like take your past and, and take the things that were important in it, that were positive and apply that to building who you are today, yeah. because it's going to make a big difference. And I, that's, you know, this, this podcast is dedicated to small businesses like yourself and, and people that work their tail off. And uh, for them to get to see someone like yourself who, or just tail off in the military because we all know that's hard work. And then you go into title, which is extremely hard work. And as you've said, don't really have hours. Not if you're doing it right. Right. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a lot to your personality to say, hey, like, my service to you is greater than myself. Well, that's the, the core values of the Air Force, our service before self, excellence in all we do. And, uh, oh, my gosh, I'm going to forget the last one. <laughs> Service for self, excellence in all we do. And, oh, my gosh, I'm forgetting the last one. They're going to hate me. My son, who's 19, who's in the Air Force, he knows that. He can he can. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put in an edit and make it voiceover so it looks like you said it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, it's, and honestly, I mean, hey, you get, a, you get a leeway. I can barely remember what I had for breakfast. <laughs> and you've been in all the, the, the service for a little while. It's okay. I've been I'm retired sure. for five years now. So Yeah, two out of three is okay. You know I mean? And honestly, especially considering... Oh my gosh! Now it's going to bother me. It is going to bother me. I'll figure it out before we we go. I, All right. I promise. I promise. If you get it before the end of the interview, just shout it out. <laughs> Interrupt me even if you have to, yeah, right so I don't middle. forget the moment. Yeah, I'll be like, "All right, we got it." <laughs> but um, yeah. So no, I mean, that service before self is a tremendous thing. I mean, that's something that uh, I think even in, in like we're talking about like if you want to go the patriotic sense of what we're talking about with what America should be and what it's always represented is that service above self. I mean. Mm -hmm. We've always kind of gone above and beyond in ways to help with relief, to help with protecting the innocent. Integrity. Integrity first. There it is. You, you heard it here, guys. <laughs> he found it. He found it. Sorry. And No, no, we're good. And and that's one of the things, I mean, I, 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 I teach this to my son all the time. It's a biblical value. You got to treat others the way you want to be treated. You know, I mean, 
and we cheapen that with golden rule sayings and, yeah. and whatnot. But really, the, the, the real word is love your neighbor. Well, if you think about that, extrapolate that, it would be love others more than you love yourself. Exactly where I was going to go with that. Yeah. And I love that it is defined as love your neighbor because in our industry, we're dealing with houses. Right. So everyone's our neighbor. Everyone's our neighbor. <laughs> and Precisely. so that, that's exactly what, and I'm, I'm so glad you pounced on that because that's it. I mean, it, it, that is what you, Marianne, do well. Um, I mean, I could say a lot of other things, but if it's going to encompass in one point, it's that you guys love the people that you, you're serving more than you love yourselves when you're doing it. Yes. And that is hard to find in business. Well, again, thank you. And it's, it's when, when you, well, let's, let's be honest and let's break this down and let's sure. get real spiritual now. All right, cool. I mean, if you love the Lord, you're going to naturally want to uh, please him, obviously. Yeah. But a natural outflow of what Jesus' love is, is that love for your, our neighbors and, and uh, you know, putting ourselves secondary, even at our own expense sometimes, right? That's right. Um, you know, just the, that natural outflow of, of true brotherly love and compassion and caring. And it's so funny. That is so needed more so in the last two years. I mean, hello, anyone? Yeah. Drive down the road, go to the grocery store, dare I say, watch the news <laughs> or just, you know, and just in the general demeanor of, of the average person, you know, when they, when the Bible talks about, you know, the end of days, I do believe we are getting on that road, well, sure. well down that, that highway, so to speak, the love of many will grow cold. And so what we're talking about here is loving others is so opposite of what the world is doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. And so if we do in a genuine bona fide love for our brother, Mm -hmm. act in that fashion, how much different are we going to set ourselves apart? We don't do it for the purpose of setting ourselves apart, but as we do it as a a part of who we are, we're, we're setting ourselves up to be for people to notice and appreciate and experience that love. Right. hundred percent. And honestly, I mean, so, I mean, this is a beautiful, we can, we go on this topic. You and I are going to be here for days. I'm going to be under results. How much time we got? Yeah, exactly. I mean, you, you and I, did, when we're at that coffee shop together, I think we went like an extra hour over just talking so, about so like, You've been here three hours. Yeah. <laughs> but um, to that point though, uh, and, and, and that's what people should embrace is like, how often do you hear any business talking about genuine love for people? Uh, how often do you talk, talk about a, a business that is, trying to go outside the box to the extent where they're showing people like there is a better way. It doesn't have to be about you. It doesn't have to be about just this inner monologue. There's something bigger than yourself. And we are here to be, to help you be part of that picture. Uh, you know, that is something that you just, you don't find in a dollar cent. You're not going to find it in a contract. You're not going to find it in a Yelp review. Um, but it's important. And I think that that's a testament to who you guys are. You guys' clients aren't all people that share your faith. No, not at all. But they come to you because that love is evident and people love to be loved. And so whether you agree with where that love comes from or not, it's still there. And that's important to, to embrace. And I, I really just, I really hope people don't lose sight of things just because I think a lot of times in this world, we get really uh, shut off when we start hearing words that are friction words or whatever else we want Christianese. to call them. Sure, Speaking Christianese. Sure, Christianese. Or whatever stereotypes or things that people throw out there. And here's the reality, guys. Like, whether you agree with us or not, and, and this is your faith, that's fine. But the principles remain the same. Yeah. And, and Who, love Who's is, not going to benefit from people loving on each other? 100%. I mean, how many songs and, and artists and people out there and politicians and, and philanthropists are out there saying this, are trying to say the same thing about, you know, try to love, you know, people. And... They're all saying to do it different ways. And we're just saying that if you took less time trying to be selfish and you took more time taking care of the next person, this world's going to look a little different. And, uh, and you know, honestly, I can tell you this, guys. When you're dealing with a $500,000 loan or a million-dollar house or a refi or some sort of asset change or title change, you're going through divorces and you're having to do with all the, the different title changes and, you know, messes that come through all that, you're going to want somebody that's gonna look beyond the contracts and the craziness of all that and says, hey, we love you. And we're gonna take care of you like one of our own. Well, that's, it's funny that you say that because it's a conversation that Marianne and I have had recently with, you know, cause 
the business has been busy. Yeah. And, you know, in the end of month, especially and days leading up to a holiday, you know, we get impacted with a huge number of recordings and, and files trying to close and everything. And that point has to be sometimes drilled into our inside staff who are so far removed from you. Yeah. And then ultimately so far, even far, farther removed from your borrowers, your right. buyers, the sellers, because they're only dealing with pretty much us and escrow. So there's this insulation, if you will. Mm -hmm. And it's like, hey guys, there's people in moving vans right now as I'm here talking to you yeah. that are dependent upon us closing this deal before the long weekend, yeah. like before a holiday, like like Wednesday before Thanksgiving. Yep. Could you imagine if for something to happen where they didn't close? And here they are, you have a family of four in a U-Haul. Yep. We had a situation like that. And we got it closed and, and the family moved in, you know, confirmation ended up coming later, but we got the deal closed. But that's a scenario where I had to remind everybody, hey, we need this done now because there's people depending upon that's us, right. a family of four. And I guess they were from out of state and stuff. Too. Yeah. So, you know, that that's a real thing. And, and you know, caring just a little bit to to maybe move that particular file to the top of the pile. I, I you know, mm -hmm. it, it takes a caring, it takes a sense of ultimate purpose yeah. to, to put in that extra effort. It's like, well, it shows the relationship and this is, I can testify why this is a big deal. Cause I mean, you know, me and Willie are a partnership in the way that you and Marianne are. And it shows that you guys sharpen each other's iron in that way because, because you guys are pushing each other to have that care, which then translates to the rest of the team. Right, did you just quote a proverb sure 21, did. 17? <laughs> I'm not good enough to remember the actual <laughs> number, but I, I'll take your word for it for now. But yeah. Iron um, sharpens iron. Iron sharpens iron. I mean, and, and you know, that's a, again, another cliche that's used in, incorrectly a lot of times. But in this particular case, you guys are keeping each other accountable to the overall mission, which is, this is about people. This is about something bigger than us. And that's a big deal, man. I mean, I'm, that's why I was saying, like, divorce is already horrendous enough. Uh, you know, title changes are already stressful enough. Buying a house is considered one of the most stressful things you can do in a life, uh, aside from building one. Crazy. We're a part of that every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're literally part of everyone's most stressful part of their life every day. And on top of all the other unique sets that come into that. And... I'm telling you guys, I'm looking at the camera right now with some emphasis. If you're listening to this on the radio, then no, I'm staring right into your face somehow uh, in, a, in a weird way through your mirror or something. But I, I can tell you this right now, guys. There is a reason that we are with Carl Marianne, and it is because we know how stressful this process is. And it is so important nowadays to find people that actually love people in every sense of the word. And to do it in any industry is so difficult. I've worked in some phenomenal industries over the years, but to do it in one that's so bound by money and by contracts, by paperwork, and very cold and distant, as you said, it's very easy to just shelf people and put them in a computer system and just be done with it based on our timelines that we gotta meet. But to actually personalize and empathize and sympathize with people in the moments that they're going through this, is a very, very unique quality to find, especially in a title company. And so I can't emphasize enough. I know a lot of times we in this podcast, we go and talk about a lot of different things. You may not hear me as often as I am now being as fervent about selling these guys to you guys as I am, but I'm a firm believer in what they do and, and who they are. And so if you guys have been following us for a while and you guys have any kind of uh, you know trust in us and we've gained any clout in that, know that uh, Carl and Marianne are some people that you guys need to look up. Thank you, John. I appreciate that greatly. No, 100%. Absolutely. You guys have earned every bit of that. We uh, will not let you down. I know you won't. And even if you did, you're human. But the reality is it's not, I'm not here because of the ups and downs. I'm here because of what your core values are. And I know what that's going to produce in the end. And, uh, you know, instead of looking at arrows and, 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 and seismic charts, I'm going to look at, I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to look at uh, the value of the person and and what you guys bring value wise to the people that I care about. Because I mean, you guys don't even know, but we've had loved ones that I've already had that have done deals through you guys. Oh, you know, because we they, they do deals through us, and you guys are our title company. And so for them to have that experience through you guys means the world to me. Perfect. I'm happy to help. That's my job. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because you you know you get compliments invariably when you do a good job, and I don't know I. I think one of my responses recently that I've used because I do I do mean this 
is people will say, oh, you're the best or you guys rock or I'm doing my job. <laughs> I mean, yeah. honestly, that's what that's what I would expect of me if I were them. Um, yeah. But I'm doing my job. So it, it's like if I ever don't take seem like I'm not taking the compliment. Well, it's yeah. I'm supposed to do this. You yeah. Know? And I, I do feel that way. So. That's a good way to look at it, honestly, I think. And that's important because if you don't look at it that way, then <laughs> what we're talking about eventually fades because you right. get to fool yourself, right? But the reality is, I mean, if you're really looking at this the right way, the attaboys and the pats on the back are nice. But if you're really looking at it the right way, it's like, yeah, but I get paid to do this. This is who I am. This is what I'm supposed been to be. been blessed. Exactly. And so I think that that's another part. I mean, and, and let's touch on this a little bit. And it's even got a little bit of your industry name in the word. You guys' lack of entitlement in yourselves is another big draw to you guys because entitlement is something that we go into again for hours on this culture and how things have changed about the way people treat people and how they view people. But when you feel entitled to something, you don't serve people a certain way. But having served our nation the way that you have, having been in this industry this long and worked every facet of it, you know what it takes. You know that there is no point in which you can drop the ball. And, and pretend like you've arrived. Because at every point, you have to give the customer just what you gave the last one, which is everything that you can. Yeah. And that's a, that's a sense of a lack of entitlement that's so important to find in an industry as well. No, it's so true because we're only as good as our last deal, really. Yeah. I mean, to in, wh whether real or perceived, it's it's that's the way it, it, it turns out. And yep. if we were to ever take for granted anything that's come our way, uh, we'll, we'll drop the ball yep. and we won't get those deals and we'll lose business and we'll lose um, the, the the great customer base that we have. And then worst of all, we would lose our reputation and lose our integrity. And that's, you know, it, 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 it amazes me. And this is kind of getting off topic, but in that's life, do, <laughs> <laughs> have you ever noticed there's some men who have great renown, who have wealth, fame, looked up to considered brilliant smart but they make some of the most stupid decisions and more so i look at very intelligent men who are atheist or agnostic at best and how the most critical important thing in life and they're smart and they're brilliant and they're innovators they make the dumbest decision they could ever make is to just ignore the the overwhelming proof of a god's existence that's something I ponder about and I think about, and it's how so tragic is how can someone so smart be so dumb sometimes, right? Yeah. I mean, that may be offending somebody out there, but it, it's true. And you need to look at the evidence for yourself. And I mean, from the creation to the, the science that does support, because there's so many people that say the Bible is anti-science. That's not that's the furthest thing from the truth. You need to dig a little deeper and I've got resources for you. So hit me up. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, what do you what do you think? I mean, you you've got to feel that too, knowing you the way I do. I mean, just yeah. just how do we get on that topic? It just but it came to me, and and it's it's you can be the whole package, but you still drop the ball. I guess is how that came about. Sure, but. sure. Well, and you know, touch on that a couple of ways. I mean, biblically speaking, there's that whole idea of when Christ says it's easier for a rich man. Uh, I'm sorry, camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to go into heaven. Right. And there's some reasons behind that. But I think what that usually, what I've tried to let that, because I've gotten into that mindset where it's like, how did you just miss that out of you know everything you had? But I think the easiest way to kind of deal with that is to allow us to keep from, from falling into arrogance is to look at it and say, man, what grace was extended to me to where my eyes were able to be open that I didn't miss it. I was just thinking of everything the other day. Yeah. It's like, thank you, Lord for opening my eyes and making me realize my need for you for one. Right. And that I see your truths yep. in virtually everything I, I look around. Well, and, and then how do I apply this in such a way where those that did miss it will not find it? You know, and that's that's the way that we I think we have to take that spin is, I mean, the reality of, of God's always going to take the foolish things to confound the wise. So thank you for making me a fool and using me, but how am I going to do that effectively? You know, and that's fine. Like, I'll be the Lord's fool any day of the week. Um, and so I think the reality behind what you and I are trying to achieve is is so much further than, than just observing that people are missing the point. We all know we missed the mark. That's in Romans 3.23. Uh, but the reality is how do we get people 
to accept that free gift that talks about in Romans 6, 23. Yeah. And, um, and to go into a point of, you know, where people understand that, you know, our business is our business, but it's not our ultimate business. And so we'll help you through title. We'll help you with your escrow. We'll help you with your mortgage payment. But are you willing to stick around for a little bit longer so we can help you with some eternal payments? You know? <laughs> right. And, and that's kind of where I'm getting out with the whole idea of love is even at the end of the day, people walk away. Most of my clients and most of my partner, partners and network partners know my faith. And it isn't, I'm not shoving it down their throat, but they know it's there and they know I'm not going to change. And, you know, they can adapt the, from the, and I appreciate the qualities of what comes from that. But uh, it's not going to change the fact that that's where I believe it originates from is Jesus Christ. And so uh, I think looking at the world as it is, is, you know, when we see people that miss it, it's just a constant reminder of the grace that's been bestowed upon us mm. and the opportunities that are out there for us to extend. That's very well said. And so I think, and, and, you know, to translate that back into our own worlds, I think somehow times I look at them like, man, how am I a homeowner? You know, I know this is kind of weird. I know, but just follow me here because it's so hard to do, especially in California, you know, and, and, and they're crazy. California is not a difficult regulatory state. <laughs> and, you know, and, and instead of being kind of stuck on my own lane and be like, well, I got my house, I'm done. You know, I'm out here with my industry. Like, how do we find other people to get in that same blessing? And that's kind of the way that life should be is how do we get a blessing? How do we extend that blessing to somebody else? Instead of hoarding all those things to ourselves and forgetting the ultimate purpose was to treat others better than ourselves. And so that's kind of, again, why I appreciate you, Marianne, so much, because whether it was the charity she and I talked about when she came in or whether it's about the, the core values and the doctrine and theology we've talked about today, there's a shared understanding that even the silly temporal things that we're working on can have much deeper eternal implications if we really allow it. Oh, amen, for sure. So I really appreciate you, Carl. It's always fun talking to you. And if you guys want to know what one of our normal conversations looks like, it's this. <laughs> I mean, we'll go talking 100%, 1,000 miles into the industry of real estate and then drop an entire apologetics course. Uh, <laughs> so, I mean, if you guys want to know, he may be officially t like title and sales, but he's also an apologist. He's a, a believer in Christ and uh, he's, you know, f uh, former Air Force, but uh, he wears many hats and he wears them all well. And so I think I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it with that because we gonna have some really nice truth bombs there for people to chew on and and I, and you know I really I really appreciate uh, that because I really that's that's something that should always be left with our podcast at any level it should be something that people can kind of stew on and think about and uh, you know as Carl was joking about it before but feel free I mean we're gonna leave his contact information on here contact him for anything title or otherwise that we discussed yeah, if you want to have a heart to heart if you're <clears throat> having a, a f crisis of faith or yeah. a lack of faith I, I i'm more than happy i may not have an answer for you but i'm going to put a stone in your shoe as greg <laughs> kokel says to do uh -huh. and uh make you make you think about the hard questions there's nothing more important in this world we can we can make money we can close deals we can do what we're supposed to do we we're supposed to work as if though we're working for the lord ourselves in our in our day jobs but our ultimate purpose is here is like you've alluded to several times is, is more than that. And, Amen. you know, I, I hope that I'm a good steward with what God has blessed me with. Well, so far from what I've seen, I think so. And, uh, and honestly, guys, again, I can't, I, I never extend how grateful I am for you guys to tuning in on our podcast and especially for a really special guest uh, with my friend and brother and Carl. And uh, I, I know that we went into a lot of uh, a doctrine and theology, which is usually not something we ever plan. We never plan what we talk about in this anyways. <laughs> so I hope you guys appreciated that and got to enjoy that, whether you agree with it or not. Let's do on it. There's some great things that you can run with, I guarantee you. Don't, don't, don't let that shut you out. And from the business aspect, I'm telling you, Carl and Marianne, they do a phenomenal job. If you ever want to know what it is to be successful in sales and do it from a genuine personality and with character and integrity, these are the guys to call. Yeah, they teach classes. They teach how to use a applications on their own. Uh, they do all kinds of seminars on how to be organized as real estate agents. They do it all. I mean, everything. They're the Swiss Army knife of the industry. And so we're so thankful for them being our partners. Please, please, please follow these crazy dots that I make James Chase all the time. Look at all these links that we're going to be putting up. We're going to have a, the uh, website and the emails and any contact information for Carl. And anything else that, uh, that he may have addressed, you can contact him for as well, including myself. So thanks again, guys, for tuning in for another week with Two Mortgage Guys podcast. And uh, give uh, Carl another round of applause for being with us today. That was 
I was blessed by this. This is awesome. We were blessed by you, Carl. Have a good one, guys. Thanks. We'll see you soon.